wanted the best, you've got the best podcast. The hottest, hottest. podcast in the, world. in the world. The Chris Voss Show, the preeminent podcast with guests so smart you may experience serious brain bleed. Get ready, get ready. Strap yourself in. Keep your hands, arms, and legs inside the vehicle at all times because you're about to go on a monster education roller coaster with your brain. Now, here's your host, Chris Voss. Monster roller coaster education with your brain. Is that what they said? Oh my gosh. Welcome, guys, to the show. Welcome. Chris Voss here from the Chris Voss Show.com. If I'm not from the Chris Voss Show.com, well, I have no idea where I'm from. So, uh, yeah, don't ask me. Anyway, guys, welcome to the show. We certainly appreciate you guys tuning in. As always, as always, make sure you support the show. Put your arm around that friend, grab by the hand, look deeply in their eyes and say, Have you subscribed to the Chris Voss Show podcast? Have you found the wonderful family that loves you but doesn't judge you? You can finally, you can finally reach that level of zen i don't know what the hell i'm talking about i'm just making it up as i go along as always at the beginning of the show anyway guys go to goodreads.com for chess chris voss see the bell notification button clearly i know nothing about zen go to youtube.com for chess chris voss see everything we're reading and reviewing over there our big linkedin group 122,000 people over there and our big linkedin newsletter it's killing it and linkedin is uh, really hot right now so you want to be sure to check that out uh, today we had an amazing gentleman on the show he's going to be coming to us talk about several different things that he does dan barrett is on the show he is the founder of pluto software and a co-founder of pacific precious metals he was one of the original owners of pacific precious metals when they were founded in 2010 he was actively involved in the operations and oversight of the company for the first few years this led dan to found Plutus software, which provides a point of sale software system to other bullion, coins, jewelry, buying and collectible paper money industry. Users of the software can manage your inventory, accounting and reporting in order to streamline day to day operations. And it's integrated with the user's website and can list their products on external sites such as eBay and Collector's Corner. Let's see, his background before Pacific Precious Metals was working as an equity analyst at a variety of Wall Street banks for nine years, and he left Wall Street at the end of 2009 uh, to go into the gold business. Welcome to the show, Dan. How are you? I'm, I'm great. Thanks. Thanks for having me here. I'm excited to be here. Awesome sauce. So give us your .com so people can look up on the interwebs these different things that you're doing, please. Well, so both of the companies, one is PacificPreciousMetals.com, I know it's a little bit long to, to type out, but it's, it's a gold dealer. It ships everywhere in the country. They have four physical locations in the San Francisco Bay area where people can go in and, and buy in person or order online and go pick up in person. And, and then the, the, the company that I'm deal almost exclusively with all of my time now is Plutus software. So the reason I got into that is having being involved in a gold bullion business. And there's no software package out there for any of those guys to use to manage their inventory or get reporting or integrate with a shopping cart, et cetera. And I have a bit of a, you know, tech background sort of interest. I decided to found Pluto software and, and build a commercial pro package for all the little mom and pop and medium size, even large guys out there, uh, so that they could sell their stuff online. Wow. And, and so, you know, when I was growing up as a kid, I was thinking I was like 11 or 12, I'm probably giving away how old I am. You know, my dad and he, and some of our family got into silver coin buying and coin buying. We would go into the shops in California and, and see the coin business. How big is the business? The, the gold business in general, the industry, mm -hmm. it's, it's multi-billion dollar business. It's, you know, the, the biggest wholesalers are in the, you know, five to ten billion dollars each but you know you sell an ounce of gold and it's two thousand dollars oh wow today right it, it doesn't yeah. take a lot of ounces of gold to add up to a few billion right and, and that's still paltry right that's still a paltry number compared to if you look at the investment market as a whole right mm -hmm. bonds equities all that other stuff right it's that's trillions that's trillions yeah. of dollars so it's it's pretty tiny industry at least today right i there's been a big shift in, since COVID started people are putting more money into physical uh, assets uh, and one of those being you know tr the traditional store of wealth which is gold yeah 
I was I was just going to ask you about that because I know, you know, the market's starting to, you know, we're starting to see the turn from, you know, buying in the stocks and stuff and you know, bonds are, I think, on their way back up. But, you know, there's always that shift of money when we move into recessionary times. I would imagine this is a good time for the business. It's the last, since COVID started, it's been a great time wow. to be in the business. Yeah. It's a cyclical business like any commodity. I don't care whether you're talking about oil, cotton, copper, whatever. It's a, you know, commodities are up and down. There's they have peaks and valleys, but in general, I would say we're in a, a structural move higher and it'll have ups and downs along that path, but it, we're in a structural move higher, particularly if you look at what's happening in the world, right? Inflation yeah. is raging. We're yeah. likely headed to a recession by the end of the year, but yeah. now the Fed has to cut or raise interest rates going into a recession, which is the opposite of what they normally would do to try to combat inflation. So we got the Ukraine war, we've got all these other issues going on. We still got COVID. I mean, look what they're doing in China right now, 400 million yeah, people true. locked in their apartments. It's, it's a good time to be in a safe haven. Yeah. And people who like gold for that safe haven thing. It's kind of funny, the price of gold. I come from the old Wall Street era where the attitude or, or the accepted thing was that gold would never break 800. There was no reason for it to ever be over 800. Like it was always that, that, that was the peak zone. <laughs> yeah. Clearly that's been thrown right out the window. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, you know, I remember for a long time, you know, everybody would be like, yeah, go, once gold gets 800, that's pretty much it. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Gotta sell and, gotta sell and people would be arguing about it. They're like, no, oh, gold could go higher. And people, you know, but yeah, it's, it's something that people want to definitely be into. So tell us more about Pacific Precious Metals. I guess we'll start there and then we'll get into Pluto Software. What, 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 what tell us more about what, what they carry, what they sell. You know, what, what am I looking to buy when I go there or, or what interests uh, should I have? Well, you know, I, I could give you that little spiel. I mean, so they, they started the, well, I started the business, right? But I think of them as they now because I don't really have a lot to do with the day-to-day is, you know, they offer people well-known, investable-grade, physical gold, silver, platinum products, right? So that means it could be anything like a U.S. gold eagle, one-ounce coin, half-ounce coin, could be a Canadian gold maple leaf, could be silver eagles or silver maples. And then there's a variety of private makers like Pamp Swiss and Credit Swiss and Valcambi, et cetera, from Switzerland that are, you know, you can take these products and you can sell them to any dealer on the planet. They all recognize them. So that's what they sell. They sell gold and silver, primarily gold and silver. They do sell platinum, but there's not as big of a market for platinum, but they sell that in physical form. So people can go to their website, pacificpreciousmetals.com, place their order, or they could just walk into one of the stores with cash and say, hey, uh, give me three ounces of gold, right? Place their order, come in, pick, pay for it, pick up the gold and go home and stick it in a safety deposit box or under their mattress or wherever they want to store the gold and, and, and take it from there. So it's, it's a way of getting money out of the banking system. If you don't trust it, it's also eliminates, you know, typical risks that are associated with having all of your assets tied up at your brokerage firm or mm -hmm. your bank. I mean, you look like you're old enough to remember the 08 crisis. You're a little younger than me, I think, but you remember Merrill Lynch went bankrupt. Yeah. Lehman yeah. Brothers went bankrupt. Bear yeah. Stearns went bankrupt, mm -hmm. right? And MFC Global, which was a big commodities house, went bankrupt for all sort of different reasons. But all, you know, if, if you were, if you had your money with them, sometimes like, I think it was with Bear Stearns or maybe it was Lehman. Some, some people had to wait a year before they got their money back. With MF Global, the commodities firm, People didn't even get all their money back. Yeah. Right. So it's a way of, you've got physical possession of, of the commodity. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter who goes bankrupt outside of your world, mm -hmm. right? You've got the gold. Yeah. Uh, so that's, that's kind of the premise of one of the reasons I got into the business back then in 2010, when I started it, um, one of the other reasons was at, at the time cash for gold where there's, you know, these commercials were on with, you know, girls with tight t-shirts and big boobs flashing big wads of cash around saying, send us your gold. I thought, who does that? Right. And I, I was actually going to wait. I had just left wall street. I was going to wait. That was a cyclical trough. I was just going to wait for it to pick back up and then just go get a job at another hedge fund. And I, you know, I said, ah, I'll just start a little gold business with a, a couple other guys and, and do that until the markets come back and then I'll shut it down and, you know, 
it'll be, you know, it'll be done. But I'm still, you know, then I'm, I'm still owner. It's still there. They've expanded. They're, they're you know, we've got four going on five locations now. So uh, it's a fun business to be to be in. And, and the number of stories I could go on with the probably 20, 25% of the American born clientele, because we have in the Bay Area, they, they have a lot of clientele that are tech guys that have come over from Asia or from Europe or whatever. The, the, they, they tend to be more sane. But I would say 25% of the American born clientele are conspiracy theorists. Really? Where, where it, it's, it's a, a, a scale of, of how far down that, that conspiracy theories they will go. I mean, I remember early on a guy came in to the office and he was, he's, he's a big time, big believer in gold and silver and great for him. He's made out like a bandit comes in and he puts his hand on my shoulder and says, don't go onto the bridges today. I'm going like I, I've had any events. particular reason? Is there some sort of an alert out by the feds that something's going on? He was like, no, one of my podcasts is telling me that there's going to be a, a water event today and it might take out the bridges. Water so, event. I don't know what that means. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so it, it's, it's a really fun business because you meet a lot of interesting people, particularly right. some of the conspiracy theorists. But at some point, you know, I, I'm, I, I wanted to get in on the tech side of it because I thought there was a lot more room for growth and that's, mm -hmm. you know, in, in 2015, I started already building, uh, the software platform and then that formally took off in 2016. Now you guys are, uh, industry accredited. You've got lots of certifications. So people can know that you guys are mm -hmm. a reputable business. A lot of these coins and stuff you guys are selling are, are issued by the government system. Yes. Well, the other thing, the other thing I'd say about that, right? So one of the, one of the things that Pacific precious metals does to differentiate itself is, is they, and this is one of the things I was paranoid about when I first, um, started the business is how do you know if you, if it's a fake? Yeah. Right. Somebody comes in and sells me 10 Krugerrands, you know, and I hand the guy $15,000 or whatever the price of gold was at the time. Right. And it's like, I better be sure it's real. Yeah. So like how, the only thing I know about gold is to chew it or something. And I, I'm, <laughs> I'm pretty sure that's a Hollywood. That's the old, that's the old Hollywood Westerns bite it. If you can put a dent in it, it's gold, <laughs> uh, which you really can't do even back then. Cause it, what, that wasn't pure gold. But so I bought a bunch of test equipment, right? For the x-ray fluorescence, specific gravity. Now they've got, we've got other things like, uh, it tests the electrical conductivity on the inside of the coin, make sure it matches gold. So there's a variety of different high tech testing that they do so that when clients go in and, and they want to take the gold with them, you can put it on all these different test machines and say, that says it's, it's gold. This says it's gold. That says it's gold. Hey, if it looks like a duck, it quacks like a duck and it walks like a duck. I'm going to conclude it is a duck, right? Now you guys also do jewelry and dental gold and right. industrial precious metals. Yes. So anything that's got precious metals, the jewelry, you know, silver, gold, platinum, people will bring it in. It's either broken or, you know, maybe somebody got a divorce and they don't want that engagement ring anymore or whatever. And I'll, I'll tell you a funny ad that I ran, you know, probably in 2011 or something on that, but you, they bring it in. We put it into the x-ray fluorescence machine. It tells you exactly what the percentage of, of gold, silver, platinum, or whatever is in that object. Wow. Then you just weigh it and multiply. Okay. It's got 75% gold and it weighs, you know, six grams. You got, you know, you got four and a half grams of gold here. And then you just pay them for the gold content. You throw it in a bag and it, you know, at the end of the month, you ship it off to a refiner who throws it into a furnace and melts it all down. But, you know, going back to that advertisement, I, I, I was trying to, I, I was advertising at the time in a local Marin, which is the county in California. I started mm -hmm. it, Marin magazine, and we put in a, a, a big full page ad with a giant engagement ring and said in the middle, it's not over until you sell the ring. <laughs> Because there's about an 80% divorce rate in Marin, right? Or 78% or some crazy high number. So, yeah, uh, it was pretty funny. The, uh, you don't, you don't have closure until you sell the ring. <laughs> Get closure today. Call us. It looks like the, I guess the dental gold, that would be great if you can come across some rappers who decide, I don't know, <laughs> leave the business. Yeah. How much is in your mouth? About 45,000. <laughs> Holy crap. I'm going to punch you in the face. No, I don't. Recommend that. So people can sell their jewelry. You probably pick up, I know it's the state sales or one of the things on there. If yep. someone has an estate or 
maybe they're yeah, somebody passes away and passes you know, away. going through all their stuff. It depends. Yeah. You know, some people have gold coins and bullion and, you know, other different things that uh, they can take into Pacific precious metals and sell. Cool. Cool. Anything more we need to know about what you're doing at Pacific precious metals? Not, uh, Probably not anything, but if you're in the Bay Area, you don't have to be in the Bay Area to buy from them. They, mm -hmm. they ship anywhere in the country. It's fully insured. It's, you know, it doesn't belong to you until you sign for it. So mm -hmm. uh, there's a little, there's virtually no risk in, in ordering and getting stuff shipped to you from them. And they're, they're cheaper than any of the big online only guys. So mm. no that downside, really. No downside. And you guys buy and sell in that, in that sphere. Correct. So people can walk in one day and buy from you. And a week later, if they change your mind, uh, they can come in and sell to you. If I bring in my wife who has the gold band that I want to sell on the ring, can you give me some cash for her too? Can you just yes. take the yeah, an extra, deal? And you get an extra yeah, 10 bucks. <laughs> right, extra there, you 10 go. bucks. <laughs> there you go. So let's talk about the other business that you're involved with. That's kind of tied into this. Let's talk about that. Right. So Plutus software. So I, I started the business, you know, what I got into or it, it Originally in the gold business, I, I ended up saying like, well, how do I, how do I do accounting for this? How do I record transactions? And so I, I, you know, at the time I helped out the guys that were actually running it day to day. I said, all right, let me call all the, all these other, a bunch of other dealers, as well as all the wholesalers around the country and find out what software do they use, right? There's gotta be some software package that's tailored to this industry. And there wasn't. You know, a couple of the big wholesalers would say, yeah, we spent uh, a couple of million dollars building our own system. Mm -hmm. There's nothing out there. So I had a choice of, okay, I can, I can build one specifically for Pacific precious metals, or I could build a more robust version and make it a commercial pa package and sell it to all these other uh, dealers all around the country. So that's the path I chose because it, I think it was more scalable and, and it had the potential to be a much bigger company than. Oh, wow. You know, one, one, you know, one, at the time it was only one bullion shop for Pacific precious metals. And it's, it's building softwares like any other construction type activity. It takes you three or four times longer than you think it's going to. And, and probably three or four times as much as it costs as much as well. But we've been building it since 2016. We uh, launched it in late 2017, I think. And we're adding clients every month and it allows dealers to do bullion, which is, you know, the investable grade format, the, the coins and bars that only trade for their gold value. They don't have any collectible value to them. It's just, mm -hmm. if the price of gold went up 20 bucks today, that one ounce bar would be worth 20 bucks more. Right. Mm -hmm. But I also designed it to handle what's called numismatics, which is collectible coins, rare coins. And that's a really big and very idiosyncratic industry. That's got all sorts of different little caveats to it of how, how dealers trade that stuff. That market's also exploded since COVID. It's, I mean, uh, it's up double or triple, right? Wow. Prices, of, prices of those coins are up two or 300% in the last three years. It does, it does the jewelry buying, it does services like estate appraisals and this and that. It, it does gems, it does paper money, collectible paper money. I don't know if you've ever seen that some of that old US paper money. I never really saw any of it till I started going to these coin shows to mm -hmm. talk to dealers to find out if they were interested in, in our, in my software. But some of this old paper money, I mean, the artwork and the bills were all bigger back before 1913, right? They were much bigger than our current $1, $2, $5 or $5, $10, you know, $20 bill. And the artwork is just unbelievably amazing on that. And I guess it makes sense, right? Back then, it's not like anyone had a printer or whatever. So you, you had these really elaborate art pieces of artwork with probably much less technology involved in a current, current bill. And it, it, you know, would be very hard to fake mm -hmm. you know, hundred and something years ago. So we also support that. So people who buy and sell that collect collectible market, and we'll continue to expand. I'll add more categories. I may even branch out, out of, out of the collectible industry into other industries where, where it's applicable, where, mm -hmm. where the software kind of suits that model. So. That was kind of the nature of how I decided to get in, what it'll address. And, you know, and it does a lot of things for these guys, right? Like I don't have a website or the websites like some little static website that hasn't been updated in 10 years. And so we give them a brand new website <laughs> and their, their inventory is linked right in. So if they buy something, 
it's instantly on their website for sale as a collectible piece of coin or money or bullion or whatever it is. You know, we feed into the accounting system into QuickBooks. We, we can, we can get, let them list it not only on their website, but we have a feed directly into eBay where they can list that, those products on eBay as, as well as another collectible site called Collector's Corner. So it's, it's expanded a lot over the years. And I think it's a, become a really robust offering as far as for this industry. And it's a pretty small industry. It's maybe 5,000 dealers across the country, right? And, and I'm not talking about pawn shops. You know, the software is not suited for pawn shops. But it's for, you know, dealers aren't into pawn, but are into the collectible side and are into bullion and coins. So it's not a huge market. So I have no competition and I haven't had competition That's awesome. for five years. Right? That's awesome. There's been a few guys that have tried, but they all come at it from, you know, a, a, a collectible coin guy will try to build a product, but he's only thinking about the collectible coins. Mm -hmm. And then maybe one other guy will think about just the bullion side, but I've got one that handles all of that stuff that almost all of these dealers do a little bit of in their shops, wherever their shop might be located. That's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. I mean, you, you, well, you have the background to think of everything. Um, looks like I missed a question that so we had a couple questions. Somebody asked price per ounce. I think we covered that, what it is right now. now this is another question. Can it be leveraged like a CD with buying gold? This is kind of. Uh, no, you can't really use leverage when you're buying gold. You could potentially, if you're buying physical gold that you're taking possession of, right? Mm -hmm. Unless you can find somebody that's going to lend you money and they hold the gold as collateral, I don't mm -hmm. think you'll be able to use any kind of leverage for physical gold. Like right? again, so, just go get a loan against it or something. Yeah, you bank. might be able to, but the, you know, even when I st originally started Pacific Precious Metals, I called up the bank to say, do you do sort of financing for inventory? And mm -hmm. as soon as I told them it was gold, they didn't really have any interest. Wow. Right? If, if it was a home where the price is pretty stable, but gold you know, it fluctuates too much. Right? Plus you can always find a home if you need to go look for it, if it disappears, you know, and get your money back. <laughs> yeah, that's right. It used to be right here on this street. I don't know where the hell it went. Where the hell did it go? I don't know. So uh, there you go. There you go. Well, this seems pretty interesting. And, and it, it's, you know, there's so many of these companies nowadays. I'm, I'm still baffled at how many retailers that have, you know, mom and pop retail shops they don't have a good website or a website. I know, you know, it's, it's with COVID, terrible. there was a lot of people that got caught with their pants down, especially restaurants where, you know, they didn't have either a good website or, you know, one that could be converted to delivery and right. Right. Or, you know, or and just, up with DoorDash or Uber Eats yeah. or whoever, it's just like, yeah. what do you guys say? Now they all are right. Yeah. Like, now a lot of them. Yeah. Yeah. So it's, it's, it's good that there's out there. And yeah, I mean, what, what, what do you, what, do you want to share any speculation that you might have of what the, what the future might be of uh, gold? I mean, we're, we're kind of in a, you know, my speculation, two to three year trough. I, this, I think uh, inflation is going to be bad for another year or two. Might get really worse. The Ukraine thing isn't helping, and that thing's going to drag on probably for a year. Could be yeah, longer. Unless, unless somebody takes Putin out, I, I can't see how it, it doesn't drag on because we're not certainly stepping up like we normally do in, in the Middle East, uh, for example, mm -hmm. where, you know, we'll just send in our planes and take out, take out the aggressor. Yeah. You know, he's, a, he's a bit bigger of an adversary. I agree. I, th I think we're in a bit of a trough. We might actually see, I think we'll be in a recession by the end of the year. Yeah. Especially if you look at the yield curve, right? Where the, usually a lot of people look at when the, when the yield curve flattens it. In other words, the yield on long-term rates, 10 year, 30 year, are lower than the short-term rates. That's usually a pretty good indication that we're on the cusp of a recession and we're getting pretty damn close. So I think we crossed over briefly a few weeks ago, but we're yeah. moving again that way. Um, you know, the Fed's tightening again, like I said earlier, the Fed's tightening into a recession, Yeah, try to slow down inflation, but uh, I think it's going to be a hard landing rather than a soft landing. And then if you look at some of the other big uh, economies around the world, I mean, even today, China devalued. Yeah, they right? took a big China, hit. Yeah, took, devalued, and the, the yen is crashing, and they're trying to, they've been trying to do yield curve control for years now, trying to keep the yeah. Japanese government bonds at lower than a quarter of 1%, and, but <laughs> they have to keep going out and printing more money to do that, and now the, the yen's crashing, and they, then they asked Yellen last week to, to help them intervene to keep the, the yen up, and she said, take a hike. So there's a lot of central bank monetary policy that's all pointing to 
further inst- and then add to that things like Putin invading the Ukraine mm-hmm. uh, and, and us sort of having a proxy war with them. It's all going to be good for gold, but I, I think we're, I think we're headed for a deeper recession. Yeah. I don't know whether the, when the market will bottom the stock market I'm talking about, I wish I could predict. And if I could predict, we could get together and raise a bunch of money and we'd, we could we'd make you know, trillion, yeah. billionaires. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, but I, I think we have not yet seen the lows and we'll have to see what the Fed's actions are. I think there's talk of 50 or 75 basis points on this next hike Yeah, uh, coming, the, coming out of the Fed. The problem with the Fed, I own a mortgage company for 20 years, so I live by the Fed. The problem with this Fed is they are behind the eight ball. They should have moved a long time ago, yes. like it last year. They should have started moving. And so now they're going to have to overcompensate. And I know what that feels like under Volcker and Greenspan. Right. And especially if you start going back to Volcker shit. Oh, we really have some fucking problems. So hopefully we're not that bad. Cause I mean, when we go to 21, 20, you know, God knows what 20% interest rates and stuff. But so you have that. The other thing that no one really talks about too, is the $8 trillion that the fed gobbled up to sit on, to buy up assets, to keep the economy afloat during the COVID, especially in the first days. I mean, they're buying like 12 trillion a day or something to keep us afloat. And they're sitting on the largest bank of money they've ever sat on before. Now that they did they have that. ever printed before. Yeah. 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 <laughs> they, I mean, they did that during the collapse with the 2009, 2008, they sat on, I think it was about four yeah. trillion or yeah, 5 got, trillion. I think their balance sheet got up to about yeah. 4 trillion. And it, it took them like what, 10 years to wash that out. And it know. never really got washed out completely. No, really? I think yeah. they started reducing it. Wasn't it in 2017? Maybe you remember 2017 where the, the fed started quantitative tightening. And yeah. they started, they started doing asset, they started doing perch, they started selling the assets they had in, in, uh, on the balance sheet. Right. Mm-hmm. And the market tanked, yeah. right. The market, t- it was a 2017 or 2018 where we dropped, you know, 15, 20%. And then it, that got people worried. And then the fed just reversed course. Yeah. So do they do that this time when inflation's at, you know, it's so crazy that maybe they can never dump that money. But when I was watching, watching the Fed conversations lately, especially one of the uh, Fed board chairs were, was on, I think one of the ABC Sunday shows. And she just, she, she, she's like, yeah, we're going to start letting that money loose. And I was like, and it was really, it was really subtle. Like, yeah, we, we really think that things are going to be positive in the future, but we're going to start letting that money loose and, and trying to drive down that portfolio. And I was like, that's not like a good thing. Like that's not going to help us. No. So, yeah, I think, I think definitely gold is definitely good for the future. And, uh, who knows, you know, I mean, at least you can trade it during the zombie apocalypse so, or maybe you can, or I, don't, I don't know how that works. <laughs> Zombies love it. Yeah. I mean, everybody's like, everybody's like, I can't wait till COVID's over and the world goes back to normal. And then, and then Russia's like, hold my beer. So, you know, there's that. I've been seeing the warnings of the inflation though, the pressures for farmers and stuff on TikTok of all places about six months ago, eight months ago, I started seeing farmers talking about, Hey, here's our load of onions that we have. And you guys need to get ready for what the, the, th- the inflation, because it's going to cost a bundle. And this was like eight months ago. And you know, farmers just, just talking about what, what it was costing. And they're like, it's going to get passed on. Yeah. And then, course. you know, now with supply chain issues and then the crane, I mean, I didn't realize how much Ukraine fees the world. Like, I didn't realize they were as big of an exporter's pause as, as they are. Yeah. I mean, luckily for the United States, Canada is also a really big exporter, right? Yeah. So unless Putin decides to invade them, they're probably, a, you know, barring weather or whatever, you know, something yeah. else that happens. Turns out Ukraine is like huge in, in fertilizer. Yes. Which everyone yeah. needs. Russia. They plant food. And yeah, Russia, Russia too, Ukraine, yeah. and Canada account for almost all the potash and stuff that comes out of, you know, into the export market. And we need that to grow food cheap. Yeah. Ugh. There you go. Anything more we need to touch on what you guys do at your companies? You know, I think that covers it. Uh, so, you know, oh. if you're a dealer out there and you're looking for some software to, to increase sales, manage your costs, et cetera, our, our product is not called, our, the corporate name is Plutus Software, but the product's name is Aureus point of sale. Aureus yeah. is the ancient Roman gold coin, A-U-R-E-U-S. And it's amazing how many modern 
collectors of coins don't don't even know that. But aureus is the ancient Roman gold coin that was used for you know six seven hundred years as mm-hmm. the as the main gold coin in the world for for trade. Uh, so it's aureus point of sale. If you're you know if you're out there and and you're trading in the bullion or coin or collectible market, I have a look look us up aureuspos.com and we'll be happy to uh, give you a demo. There you go. Uh, give us the other dot com if you would too. Sure. Please. Pacific Precious Metals. Pacific like the ocean. PreciousMetals.com. Right. They got a nice website. You can order right online. You can call them and talk to a person. That's not all just chat bots. So, and it's, and they're cheap. There you go. There you go. And you could have it shipped to you anywhere in the world. Well, we'll ship to the, anywhere in the U.S. Oh, okay. Anywhere in the U.S. Then I stay yeah. corrected. All right. Well, thank you very much for being on the show. We really appreciate it, Daniel. Hey, thanks for having me, Chris. I uh, appreciate the opportunity. Thanks for coming on. Thanks to my audience for tuning in. Go to YouTube.com, Fortune's Chris Voss. Go to Goodreads.com, Fortune's Chris Voss. Go to all groups on Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, and all those great places across the internet. Thanks for tuning in. Be good to each other. Stay safe, and we'll see you guys next time.